Well, let's get started on the process itself. What, uh, what's, what's our first step? I'm going to take Paul and we're going to cut out the flat base for it first and get it set up to add the side rails and the ends to. Okay, we're going to take a 48 inch piece of plywood. This is what we've done. It's a full sheet. We've cut it down to 42 inches wide. Now, at the front of the boat, we're going to take our 3 inch offset, come up 24 inches, put a 1 inch offset, and then we're going to scribe that line with a flexible ruler or a stick and cut that much off of each side of the front of the boat. There's a reason you use marine grade plywood. And uh, you know, if you're just using cheap plywood, you might have a problem. Why do we use this marine grade? It is a, an exterior grade type of plywood for this purpose. This particular plywood is 5 8 And it is a top grade ply, and it's individually plied with a very good exterior glue. And they use a thicker ply to give it a better density and a better bonding. All right, we're gonna make a three quarter mark down the side so we'll know where to set our rails. We wanna take our compass and you'll start at the front of the boat and set it on a three quarter offset and scribe all the way up our shirt to our first piece of plywood and stop there. And I'll repeat that on the other side. All right, we're gonna take our poplar base rails and set them right over here at the edge. We're gonna set this in place and pre-fit this rail before we cut it at the ends and the back. Those screws are inch and five eighths and you'll notice we haven't countersunk them all the way because we're simply holding this channel in place so that we can pre-mark it where we're gonna put our glue. Marking both sides so we got a good mark on it. And I'll repeat that on the other side. We've got the front part of the boat place. Now we're gonna put the secondary piece of plywood in the back and mark it likewise we did the front, okay? All right, Tim, this one's been pre-cut to 42 inches to match the width of that other piece of plywood right there too. Now, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set a three-quarter back set and mark this piece of plywood here. And then we're gonna mark the end of the plywood that we're gonna cut. We're gonna make a three-quarter mark to carry through with the rest of the boat all the way down to the end now. Now that we've got our first sheet of plywood marked, when we set our second piece in, we're gonna get a three-quarter mark all the way up there about every eight or 10 inches so that our rail can line all the way up the side of this with the same three-quarter overhang on each side also. Before we set this plywood in place now, we're gonna come back and cut this channel strip back three-quarter so that when we set our gunnel in place, our end board, it'll be sitting on the plywood also like the rest of the sides in the front. So we've got our mark there and we've got our match three-quarter mark right there. All right, just like Tim we did on the back, we're gonna give a three-quarter reveal on this plywood so that it has a lip extended like on the edges so that we can set our front board in front of it too Which and screw into. Same process, we're just duplicating it in the front. All right, gonna set our plywood back in place. Got a three quarter offset coming off the back. Everything's good to go. Next step is to uh, pre-screw the channel into this piece of plywood also. All right, John, you're holding in your right hand. What kind of wood is that and what's the measurement on Again, that? Again, this is yellow poplar, seasoned yellow poplar. It's approximately four and a half inches wide. It is simply a cleat board to bond these two separate pieces of plywood together. As a bonding agent, waterproof to seal out any leakage you get up in there. We're gonna set it in place and just fit it. Now, of course, we'll pre-drill it and set screws in it. Now that we've pre-drilled this, I'm gonna put the screws in it so we can hold the two pieces of plywood together and not have to lose our sizing on that as we take the rest of it apart. What's the next step? Obviously, we gotta get it ready for gluing, correct? Our rails are set, we're marked. 
Now we're going to take these off with the exception of this. We're going to leave it in place so that we've got a bonding agent between the two pieces of plywood. We're going to pull these off, clean them. We got wet cloths in our hands. Why are we getting it wet? And what's the purpose for all this? We want to get enough water on it to dampen it real good. That cleans the dust off. It gives us a tracing agent for the glue to bond into. So everywhere inside that line, just soak it in pretty good. Doesn't have to be dripping wet, but just as long as you get it damp. And when you leave it alone, you look back and it's still damp. All right, we're using Gorilla Glue. And I noticed on the side of this, it actually says, damp it, glue it, clamp, clamp. it. And that's exactly what you're gonna do. Now you're gonna make a, a pattern here. Explain why. This is an expanding glue. So what I'm gonna do is give it room to expand. I'm gonna zigzag it, make sure that it's a permanent run, not a broken run, so that no water seeps in and out once it's bonded. Now, as we place this on here, <clears throat> he's gonna hold that piece off because we're gonna curve this wood like we did to start with, and I'm gonna lay it in place in the same screw hose we patterned it on so that it stays put and I don't have to lose it off my lines or spread the glue where I don't want the glue to be. I'm gonna come back if I feel like there's not enough screws in it and add another one because I wanna make sure it's clamped and bonded with these screws. Come over with it some, Paul. And this is drawing up the wood real good and making it a clamp at the same time. Any of the excess glue that exposes itself now, I wanna make sure I get cleaned off before it starts setting. And you'll come back a couple of times and do this because as it continues to build, and foam will continue to come out of it. I'm gonna take this center cleat out of the middle now because we haven't glued it yet and I don't want it to get stuck with the other glue before I get a chance to put it in place. I'm gonna prep and clean this the same way we did the side channels. We left a slight crack between those two, just enough for the glue to get down into. It's probably a sixteenth of an inch. I'm gonna put a liberal amount in that seam so that we get a good bond on our two pieces of plywood. We're gonna set that back in place and screw it down now. Yep. You in? You've seen us wipe this down once already. Now you see it's continuing to foam. It's the exterior on the outside of the boat where you're gonna lay and apply that side rail is where you wanna keep it clean as it foams out. So I'm gonna clean it one more time. We've set this two before underneath of this just to get us a pre-arch while this is still drying. And we're gonna draw down the secondary part of it back here so that we get the glue to dry with this in an arched position, which is what it's gonna be like when we put our side rails on it tomorrow. How many hours would you recommend to let this glue, let it sit glue eight dry? Hours. Eight, eight hours. Eight hours at least. Sit good, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it rec it, I'd let it sit overnight because there's no reason to come back too soon and do something. As we see the shape of this boat take place, obviously the next thing we gotta do is put some sides and a front and a back on it. And when I saw you uh, pre-cut a piece over there just to see how it fit a little while ago, yep. it's sitting down. And I noticed there was a curvature to match the grade that you uh, put the bend in it with last night. So how did you cut that particular piece so it would fit? Tim, we took our 12 foot, one by 12, and I came down to eight feet and marked it at eight foot point. Then we're gonna come down at 10 feet and I'm gonna mark it at a 10 foot point. At our eight foot mark, we started at zero point where nothing was taken off. I came down two foot and marked 10 and three eighths that was one inch off if I subtracted from the 12 inch board. And I came down and took three inches off that gave me eight and three eighths. As soon as we got that part done, if we put a straight edge on it, you'd see the part that I'd cut off. All we did was set this on top, bend it up to my points, scribed it with a pencil, and took off that much. All right, we're gonna take our 12 foot cut board. We're gonna match it and cut a pattern on our other board that we haven't done anything to yet. I'm gonna scribe this same mark and we're gonna cut this much more off of this one so we have a matching set of runners. Now you've got, this is called a cleat, and once, where's that go? Cleat's gonna go in front, just like the two on the side. We're gonna put a cleat here between these two at the front and back to give us support brace that will screw our cap and um, transom in. 
You're just doing the same thing you did before, correct? Same thing. We're giving us a pencil line, so we'll have a glue mark to lay our glue in after we soak it down and wet it real good. We'll wet this down, do the same process as every time we glue something, we're going to wet and soak it so that it'll trace that glue. And I'm going to screw it in place with these screws, and that'll serve as my clamping. Inch and five eight screws with a square or Phillips head. Same thing we've been using all along. About every six to eight inches, just as long as it's pulling it down good, we'll be in good shape. We're gonna work the sides in with some water now, Tim, and prep it for the glue too. I think this step right here, John, once people see these two sides go on, that's gonna really put this thing together, make it look like a boat. It's gonna be most of your boat is what you're gonna, you're gonna picture your boat as soon as we raise these up. And if you hear the noise in the background, that's rain. So we may need this. Uh, can you hurry this up? We might need to We're pull hurt. it out of here in yeah. a while. We'll get a paint job on it this afternoon. <laughs> we dampened it down real well. Before we put the glue on it, we're going to set it up one more time and dry fit it. Make sure we don't have to do any adjustments or any modifications to the links. Once you change this arch, it may adjust the length of this board and make it a little longer than what it should be. So you'll want to check your measurements after you dry fit it every time before you put glue on it and stick it up there. Come to me, Paul. Ho, right there. That's good. At any point that you've got a board set up, dry fit it first so that you can check and make sure nothing's changed with your arch or your measurements where it's longer or shorter. Double check it and dry. Check it first before you put any glue on it. And just like this case here, we've got about a quarter inch extra. We're gonna cut that off so we've got a good flush fit at the back as well as the front. Every time you cut a piece and you sit it in place to glue it, Double check those measurements and make sure it's fitting right for the next piece. All right, now you've pulled the boat over to the edge of the table so we can, you're thinking ahead, you've got to clamp this thing. All right, a little different process on the gluing this time. But we are at the point where this side's going to go on. When you put the glue down and the clamps and the screws, it's there. It's done. But what's the difference in the gluing? We're going to put one good bead right down in that corner and set it in place. It'll expand under and up without having to add an extra zigzag barrier or any other extra glue to it. This is going to be plenty of glue right here. And I'm going to start right here and put a screw in this one first after I get a clamp on it to hold it flush at the front. So that I don't change anything else, I've got this one set in place right at the end of the board where I want it. I'm going to set a screw inside of it right flush into that channel board we put on. Not too close to the end so I don't split the wood. Add another spot. I'm going to change my clamp again. Tighten it up, you can drop it all the way down on it now. I think we'll be okay. Now we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. I'm gonna keep on cleaning this glue that's foaming out, wiping it down smooth right on the side of this so that it presses it into the end of that raw plywood and into our poplar. It's something we won't have to clean off later. And I've left this two before in the front of the boat to keep our arch in place while we were pulling up the front of the boat to match our cut on those side rails. All right, Johnny, you got a boat sitting here in front of us almost. What'd you cut these pieces up for? All right, sides are done. These are gonna be cleats for our back seat. So right. we're gonna set these in place, glue them, wash them down, just like we did every other process. What was the measurements on this again, John? They're 10 and a half by seven and a half. 10 and a half long, seven and a half, and our seat's gonna be 12 inches. That'll give us a little overhang, and it gives you a little pocket box to set stuff underneath of while you're traveling down the creek. All right, Tim, here's our transom. And what we did was, we took our bottom measurement right below here. We took that measurement. What we've done is add a three degree exterior outfall. That gives us a wedge shaped piece of wood. And as we set that in there, I'm gonna dry fit it first. You're gonna see how it flares out the side of the gunnels. And that gives it a little flare on the side of the mm -hmm. boat. Gives you a little more water buoyancy. Just three degrees. Three degrees on cut the on the short side, laying it out like that. Just three degrees on the length of that board. And that's the same size, one by 12, that we used on our outside bands. Just like last time, we're gonna run a bead right up in the corner and right on the face of that. Run one down the corner and the inside too. All the way down the back of it. One continuous bead right up the corner again and a little on top of the face. Thank you. 
getting mine out. You can put a seat anywhere in this boat that you want to do this. Yeah, structurally right now it's it's together and solid. Those seats you place in there, wherever you place them, are just going to give it some more strength, okay? You can put one at each end, one at each end, one in the middle, it doesn't matter. And you'll build them the same way we're going to build this one. It's going to give it the same characters. You're just going to have a different placement okay. for it. Now we've taken the same kind of channel and rail that we put on the bottom and everywhere else, and we're going to use it as a cleat to put here in the back. We're going to add another one to the face, slide it in place, and that's going to be our frame to set our seat on. All right, Tim, just like this one, we're going to add the front cleat into it. We pre-drilled it. When you get to dealing with some small wood like that, if you put a screw in too close to the edge, you're going to split it like that. So we've washed it. We're going to put some glue on it, set it in place. It has the same three degree inset cut from zero, so it slides and matches the angle of the back of the boat too. I'm going to put the finished side up so that's the smoother side. There's a finished side and there's a rougher side of that marine plywood. An inch and a quarter screws. Tim, everywhere we've put on glue, before we put another board on it somewhere, where we've got this expansion of glue, we're going to clean it off and it's a real quick and easy process. Two or three hours after you've glued it, come back and it's pliable enough. You can take a knife and cut right down on it like that. Slide it across the bottom, and it pulls out just like that. And you've got it all off your spot, just as clean as it was before, okay? Tim, now we're gonna put the bow of the boat on. We're gonna set it in place. We've already pre-cut it to the same height as this. Eight and three-eighths is what this one happens to be. We're gonna scrab the side. It's laid up square where we want it. I'm gonna scrab this side too. Take it over here and cut it. We'll come back and clean it and put it in place. Putting the glue right in the corner joint like we did last time. Gonna set it in place. I'm gonna put the shorter screws in it. We've been using inch and a quarter and inch and five eighths. We've got the bottom in place. Now while the glue's still wet, we're gonna pre-drill this top and I'm gonna set it in place like this. And we'll pre-drill all of these at the end so we don't split them out. All right, John, we're in the final, final stages here. Um, you built the back seat, you built another seat, because, you know, technically you could fit a couple people in this boat and we plan on that. Now, and you followed the same steps in the middle seat that you did in the back seat. Same, 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 same process. deal. Yeah. Now in the front, you're putting a board here that uh, we talked earlier about the fact that when you're pulling this boat along, you need a, a handle yeah. where you can grab the back. Plus, it's a seat somebody could set up here in Skull or whatever yeah. they have to do. This will serve as a handle. It'll be a base seat. It also serves as a step to step on when you're going to leave the boat or step into the boat. So you don't have to make such a stride going down into it. It also gives you the stability in the front that our back seat did in the back. So, so you're basically gonna I'll scrap this, this on off. the bottom side. It'll sit right in place. Remember, we brought the cone of the boat mm -hmm. into a point here. So I'm gonna have a, that same three degree angle we've been talking about all along draw up in here too. Right. So you cover that side for me right there. All right. You good there? Good to go, we'll screw it down and glue it like we did the rest of it. And you use the same process for the other same seats process as around. well here, just a frame, you build yep. a frame, pop it in here. All right, to refresh where we're at, we're measuring from the back of the gunnel. This splice cleat to put our two pieces of plywood together is centered at 47 inches. Continuing the run of our tape, we're gonna put the next one at 104 inches, right in the center. I'm gonna place this board on both sides of that mark. That's where we cut it to fit. And I'm gonna scrub each side of that line so I'll know where to put my glue process. The reason we did this was the strips we'll put on the bottom in just a few minutes will give us a nailer point at this point, the front, at that strip in the back so that we don't have any protruding screws coming into the bottom of the floor. Okay, Tim, we've got the front done. Now we're gonna flip it over and put the runners on the bottom. I'm 
Now I'm going to clean up any surplus foam and glue that's come out on the side of it before we get ready to put our strips on it. And you'll notice right there, there's one little screw that's popped through. That's not a problem. As we sand this, we're going to sand that down too, and when we paint it, it'll seal it up and get rid of it. All right, Tim, the last construction phase we've got is to clean and prep and glue on this last runner strip. We'll have four of these that'll attach on the bottom of the boat to block any abrasions in the river or wherever you're going to stop. Okay, we've got the first one on. Now we're going to come over every 14 inches to the center with the other three strips and repeat the process. The other one goes on the edge and we'll have that done. We used the oak rails for the bottom to stop any kind of abrasions from rocks or anything you might run over while you're in the creek. That's why we use the oak. It's harder than the rest of the wood and it'll give you some stability on the bottom of the boat to be able to walk on it with that much give to. I'm impressed with your skills as usual. I mean, but this was not terribly complicated. Got it done in just several hours. I'm not done yet, but the next time you see this boat, it's going to be in the water and we're going to be doing a show on it. Now, what are some more things we can do to pretty it up? To wrap it up, <clears throat> we've got some fine sanding to do. We'll primer it. We'll take some butyl caulk and touch up any screw heads, pieces and parts that we want to seal up just to smooth it up real good before we put a paint job on it. And it's ready to go. Can I pick the color? Yeah. Is camouflage a color? It's several colors, but you can pick. Can camo. I pick that? How about, yeah. how about Kentucky Field 09 on the side? Kentucky Field 09 and a camel job. That's what I'm talking about. I can see you doing some hunting out of this now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, man. You're I welcome. appreciate it. I'll see you.